One of the most confusing topics for students who are studying how to account for stock issuances is this concept of the par value. You've got some companies that issue stock that has a par value associated with it, and then you've got some companies that issue stock that has no par value at all. So naturally, students are wondering, what is this par value? Why does it exist? Okay, so par value is really a historic relic. Okay, it's a price that's set in the corporate charter. Now, it was intended to protect investors. Okay, so in the old days, it used to be you'd have like $100 par value per share. That was very common. Okay, so let's say we've got $100 par value and you're an investor, you buy a share with $100 par value. Now, if that company at some point in the future issues a new share, okay, so they issue a new share to somebody else, and let's say they issue that share in exchange for property uh, that, that is worth $2, okay, that person gives $2 of property in exchange they get a share. And you're saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, they just gave $2 of property and got a share, and this was supposed to be par value of $100 a share. I'm worried now this company's just giving away shares uh, in exchange for things that have very little value in return. So they're basically flooding the market with shares. And so now my share is going to be worth a lot less. So basically, at that time, if a company did this and they issue the share in exchange for something worth less than the par value, the company would incur a liability because this is a lot less than the par value. So what companies did was they said, well, wait a minute, we don't want to get hit with a liability. We want to be able to issue new shares if we need to and not worry about a liability. So what they did was said, look, we're not going to issue with a par value of, of $100 a share. We're going to have a par value as low as possible. We'll say like maybe one cent per share. Okay, so they basically deliberately set the par value very low. And this continues to this day. If you see a company that's issued par value stock, uh, take a look at their common shares, you'll see that the par value is probably set very, very low. Now, some states, uh, you know, realize this reality that, well, people are just setting the par value really low. So this par value really doesn't have much meaning anymore. So some st uh, states in the United States, for example, now allow companies to just issue stock uh, without a par value. So they just say, look, there is no par value. It's just no par stock. So now I want to show you the journal entries uh, either way. Okay, first I'm going to show you if you issued stock that had a par value. So let's say Vegan Water, they issue a thousand common shares of stock. Uh, for $25 a share. So the company is receiving $25,000. Okay, so they're going to debit the cash account for $25,000. They're going to credit common stock for the amount of the par value times the number of shares. So 1,000 times a dollar a share par value, they're going to credit common stock for 1,000. Okay, but we see we need another credit here of 24000 to make the debits and credits balance, and this is going to be a credit to additional paid-in capital. Now, remember, additional paid-in capital is a stockholder's equity account, just like common stock. So the effect of this is total assets go up by 25000 total equity goes up by 25000 Now, if the company were to say, so you'll see in some cases where there's this thing called a stated value instead of a par value. They, they say, well, we have a stated value for the stock. I don't want to go into all the details of that. I'll just tell you that the journal entry would be the same. Uh, you'd be debiting uh, cash and then crediting common stock and crediting additional paid in capital. It'd just be paid in capital in excess of the stated value. Okay, just a little FYI caveat there. Now, let's say that there's no par value. We've got true no par stock. We're not going to have an additional paid in capital credit. Okay, if there's no par, so there's, I had said in the previous example, par value of a dollar a share. Well, let's say there's no par at all. Okay, then we're going to debit cash for $25,000 and credit common stock for $25,000. There, there is no credit to additional paid in capital. Now, if you look at the effect on the balance sheet, it is the same whether it's no par stock or whether it's stock with par value. Total assets are going up, up by 25000 and total equity is going up by 25, uh, 25000 The only difference is when there is a par value, you're splitting up the equity between the common stock and additional paid-in capital accounts, whereas when it's no par stock, there is no additional paid-in capital. It all gets booked to the common stock account.